What's up, everyone? Welcome again to another edition of the Cruising Crew. What up? I am your host, Josh, alongside KV. We have a good show. I'm pretty excited. Yeah, we got uh, Lisa Cavallaro, who is a, a uh, I guess you could say up-and-coming, maybe, yeah. artist in the... Uh, independent in artist. The, independent artist. Musician. Musician. She uh, just released her latest EP, uh, Music Candy. Which is pretty good. It's a nice little poppy sound to it, so... Well, I'll get into it with her more, but I, I kind of... Oh. Hey, Lisa. Hi, it's Lisa. Hey, hey, Lisa. How you doing? Good. How are you? Doing great. Thanks for joining us. No problem. Thanks for having me. Uh, we're, we're more than happy to have you. It's our pleasure. Oh. So, so uh, talk about your album here. It's uh, Music Candy, right? Yes, Music Candy. Um, well, it just came out February 23rd, and it's really um, just a pretty much a pop rock EP. And, um, right. I'm really excited about it because um, I've been working on it for a while now. And how how much time did uh, went into making of it? Well, um, some of the songs on there actually, I think out of four out of the five songs were written um, about like three three years ago. Wow! And they just kind of sat for a while. And then recently, I you know I kind of pulled them all out and I started writing some more songs. And actually, the song called um, "What Is Love." Uh, it's yes. a new one, and one of my friends heard it, and they were really excited about it. So they're like, "Why don't you like you know get them produced and you know start singing more? You know, kind of like become more professional with my music." You uh, last week you uh, had a show, right? Yes. Yep. And how was that? How'd that go for you? Very cool. I played at um, Fuel House Coffee, Very and cool. it's one of the um, pretty pretty cool hot you know local scene spots right now. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, you know the local music scene in South Jersey is pretty pretty kicking. Is it? I mean, I, I I'm not, you know, uh, pretty much keen on on what's going on. So, oh, uh, you know, talk about a little about the Jersey scene and, and you know t- the music uh, that's okay. influenced you and you know your sound. Pretty okay. Much. Sure. Um. Well, I think a lot of the local artists would agree that um you know I guess first we'll I guess let's talk about the influences that uh that I'm into um. I guess one of my biggest influences would be the Beatles. Um, I think I first I started listening to the Monkees as a child, and <laughs> <laughs> that was like you know one of my first things I gravitated towards in um, you know with rock music. And eventually that led into like um, you know I think later on into my obsession with like Smashing Pumpkins, which is kind of weird if you think about it because Smashing Pumpkins were more alternative, yeah, and, um, kind of like goth rock. Mm-hmm. But I did notice a lot of influences that they used that the Beatles were, you know, mm-hmm. Beatles inspired. And so, would, okay, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, I was going to say, is your out is this uh, EP uh, influenced by a lot of those artists? A lot of it, yep. I would say it would have to be definitely Smashing Pumpkins, the Beatles, the Doors, uh, and the Monkees. I noticed, and I I really enjoyed it, the versatility of this EP. Every song kind of has a different flavor. There's some songs that have like a pop flavor. Others kind of are like a classic rock. Ah, I'm glad you noticed that. Um, I, I just just thought that was very impressive. Thank you. Um, I guess like I would say that would come down to my you know big variety of influences. You know, um, I listen to a lot of things, and even growing up, I listened to a lot of country music, which um, you might kind of hear a little bit of that in um, my song called "He Tells Me." Mm-hmm. And um, actually, my mom listened to a lot of country, and I, I pretty much listen to anything. I don't really shut the door to you know varieties of music. I think you know I'm a big um, Paulina Rubio fan. She's, you know Latin music, and I even work mm-hmm. at a Spanish TV station, so I, I know I'm I'm kind of exposed to a lot of different types of music there, and it's pretty cool. Very nice. Mm-hmm. Um, so you have anything coming up, like any uh, upcoming shows? I do. I have a um, show at um. New Revelations Music and Novelty Shop, um, March 14th, it's a Friday night, um, at 7 p.m. It's in Millville, New Jersey, and um, I'm going to be doing a, probably an acoustic set of um, Music Candy. Very cool. Very nice. Mm-hmm. Now, you recently just had your uh, release party for the AAP, right? I did. Mm-hmm. How'd that go? That was very exciting because I, um, I have a band called um, Band 9, and uh, they were able to perform at that show, and uh, right now... Uh, you know, I'm starting to just pretty much get them into the swing of things and starting to take them out with me 
to perform the songs live as they could sound, you know, basically get it sounding like the produced CD. Because they weren't, um, when I recorded the CD, it was basically just me and my producer. And the band came into the picture later on, and so we're just pretty much starting to bring it all together. I noticed you blog just about almost every day, oh. it seems. <laughs> I am a blog freak. I was reading a uh, recent one you were talking about. Uh, one just caught my eye was uh, about MTV and uh, like the Sweet 16. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I could not agree with your uh, commentary on that any more than <laughs> what you said. I cannot stand them. Thank you. Yeah, I just don't, you know, I believe MTV is for music. You know, it was put there. It's called, you know, music television. And I just don't understand why they decide they're going to air whiny teenagers all day long. But <laughs> that's what they, you know. That is a perfect statement. <laughs> said any better than that? No, that's really what I wanted to get get into. Is like your view of the music industry now? It's you know, where is it at, and you know, where could it be headed? Like if you had, you know, hmm. your ideal that's view a, of it. That's a great question because I think about that like almost every day, and I see um, I see a lot of kids influenced by music for like the wrong reasons. Um, mm -hmm. and I just, um, I feel like, I think, I also, you know, I, I can feel that people still really love, generally love, like, pop rock, but they're like, right. they don't want to admit to it, you know? And, um, right. yeah, it's kind of like, I don't, I think, you know, I notice in a lot of other countries that, um, pop rock is still very big, and, um, but over here, people tend to shy away from it, or they kind of like, you know, kind of do with the cool thing. You know, and maybe it happens to be different a different style of music, but I think um, I would really love to see more rock music in the mainstream. Amen to that. <laughs> you mentioned that your most of these songs have been lying around for three years. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what goes into your your writing process, and what makes you decide, okay, I'm going to put this song out to the public? Um. Well, I, I write in generally like. Um, I guess moments of inspiration come up when I least expect them. So I could be okay. thriving or I could be, you know, eating, <laughs> you know, and I'll have a thought and then eventually, like, I'll, I'll put it down on paper and sometimes, like, a song will just flow out all at once. And so when I write the song, I sit there and think about it and I, I'll, I'll really like it when I write it and then I'll step back for a second and I'll go, oh, you know, I kind of either doubt it, you know, so then I'll just kind of put it aside or I'll play it and I just, you know, I think the song sat so long because I didn't really think... I kind of like what you were saying. I didn't think they would fit into the to the realm of, you know, people actually gravitating towards them. I didn't, you know, because it wasn't in vogue, I would say. But um, I don't know. After a while, I just realized that, you know, I should just go with it, even not really mattering, you know, what people think of it. Just kind of do it, you know. I I agree with that completely. You should just do what feels good because, like we're saying, your your music's so versatile. There's something there for everyone. Mm -hmm. It really is. Thank you. Yeah, I I think so. It kind of kind of crosses in a bunch of different little, you know, areas. And I think there's something that somebody like you said somebody can relate to. You know, pretty much about life in general. A lot of stuff about love and you know stuff that everybody can pretty much kind of gravitate towards. All you need is love. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right. Well, the album is uh, Music Candy, and it's in stores now, right? Yes. Yep. Right, and where can people go to pick that up? Um, they can actually pick it up at my website from PayPal at uh, lisarocks.net, or they can um, go to New Revelations Music and Novelty Shop in Millville. There should be a couple copies there. And um, the Pittman Bus Stop um, in Pittman, New Jersey, they will have a couple copies. Um, they can also purchase it on cdbaby.com. All right, very nice. Well, and be sure to check out your next show. When is that again? It is March 14th, Friday night at um, New Revelations Music and Novelty. All right. In Millville, New Jersey. All right. So, uh, you know, you know, we want to thank you. I mean, we'll let you go. And, we, you know, you're busy, you know, preparing for all these shows and everything. So <laughs> thank you so much. We want to thank you for joining us. And, uh, you know, you have an open invite anytime you'd like to come back. You know, we'd love to have you. Thank you. I'd love to come back. All right. Thanks thank a lot, you. Lisa. Take Thanks. care. Goodbye. Bye. Bye-bye.